Just a little detail here before I put the inner wing on. These flanges, I like to neaten them up. You can see I put the pencil line on there. And I'll fill in those little V's as well. Got the new driver's doorstep clamped in place and cut in where the bottom of the A panel and the bottom of the rear quarter panel join it. There needs to be a juggle in the doorstep to make it flush. It's ever so simple to do. Got a piece of scrap metal with a straight line on the edge. I've got my line marked out where the juggle's going to be on the doorstep line them up, clamp it all down and chase it in. Juggles on both ends are done now. First flush with the rear quarter panel. Flush with the A panel. The door skin seems to fit in the aperture really nice. So once we skin the door, it'll be lovely. Taking off the rear quarter panel and the doorstep so that I can fill them with paint. So it's weld, weld through primer and then mask it up and fill with red oxide. Done the same on the quarter panel and the doorstep. I'm ready to weld them on now. While all the side is off, off the van, there's not an awful lot holding the roof up. So just temporarily put the wood in there, wedging it in place and I'll take it out again when it's, when it's tacked in. On vans and pickups, this flange is there a little bit wide, but it's the only difference really that I find between the saloon and the pickup. And it's because the rear quarter panel is so much longer than the saloon, it's got more shape in it. So it sits further out and there's not enough space to get to the top of The replacement panels are sometimes the flange is a little bit longer. This is one of the longer ones. I need literally 16th of an inch. So rather than weld a strip of metal, I'm going to try something a bit different. I've got three, three points that I've measured, and I'm going to try and pull this flange out to get that 16th of an inch that I need. Ooh, 
that's eight for an inch. That's the six inch that I need. And with the quarter panel back on, that's perfect. I'm happy about that. Now that I've got the front panel back from the sandblasters with the grill welded into the new panel, I need to do the last couple of bits. These connected to the inner wings. I've got a template to make the new ones. I'm going to show you how to make them now. Very simple. I need to turn the 90 degree flange just here. Do that on the Jenny. Just feed it for a few times. Now to the shrinker. This flange here should be straight, so we can shrink it. Just like that. Old one, new one, and the other one to do. Try not to fold it up the wrong way. And it fits on just there, It'll be spot welded, once I've repaired those holes. And that's the front panel finished. The original grill welded into the new front panel. As I said before, we've changed the indicator flints, welded up the little cutouts in the bumper lip and changed the number plate brackets. And then corrected the slam panel for the year of manufacture. Here's a little issue I've come across a few times. Brand new door skin and brand new Eight panel. I've got a nice three mil gap clamped together and I've perfectly aligned the hinge holes. It's a quarter of an inch short at the top. So I've got an original 1962 door skin on one of my own cars, which is 20 and 5 eighths of an inch from the bottom to the top in the same spot just behind the hinge holes. I've got a brand new heritage door skin from six years ago, which is 20 and three quarters of an inch, eighth of an inch difference. This door skin is 21 inches. It's three eighths of an inch, nine and a half mil difference. Panels seem to be all over the place at this one, at the moment because they're not always like that. I'm having a good think about it. Where well, I pointed out earlier that this line here is higher than the A panel, making the A panel appear too short. Look at it closer, there's two lines. I have scribed that bottom line so it shows more prominent, but this line, top line, is where it catches your eye, catches the light. If you look here, 
there's also two lines there so somehow it's rattled in the press tool and ended up with an extra line there and an extra line there so I'm going to tidy this up so that that is the prominent line and that will line up with the A panel. That line is now nice and straight. You can just about see where it was. A very slight crease. It's a nice straight line and that will line up with the A panel. In the last video, I showed how I repositioned that new tab in slightly the wrong place, the same as it was in the factory. So now I've got the rest of the scuttle off. It shows that the other four are all snapped off, but they're not perfectly located. So I've marked out the positions and I'm going to replace them, copying that original positioning again. All new wiring tabs fitted in exactly the same positions as from the factory, replicating the spot welds as well. Before I fit the new scuttle, there's some of the holes need welding up, two there and two there. The windscreen washer holes need relocating to match my pattern, which is an original scuttle from the 60s car. So now the scuttle is in place welded the ends, the rest of it is tacked in place at the moment. Time to do the front end. First thing you always have to do is centralise the bonnet to the front panel. And the scuttle. That way you know you get your gaps right. And it'll fit lovely. This side of the van's all aligned now. It's only clamped in place, but it all lines up nicely. Body line follows through nice. The gaps are reasonable at the moment. Door steps welded in place, and I've welded the inner A panel in place. Front end aligns quite nicely. This side's got some screwy things going on. I'll explain. It's a little tricky to do this one handed. You, you can see those spot welds down that edge there. See ya. That's nice and straight. At the bottom here, you can't see it, but it measures up at one and three quarter inches. On this other side, the spot welds aren't visible. Because if you remember from the first video on this van, this edge had been beaten back about a quarter of an inch to make space for the door that didn't fit because the A panel was in the wrong place. It's not straight. It bows about three sixteenths of an inch at the bottom. And that measures up at two inches. Oops, two inches. I'm going to strip the paint off, see what we can do about that. That was a lot of filler. All right, that arrow there shows the last hammer mark that I can see as it goes towards the top. It's difficult to show on the camera, but at the bottom here, it has been beaten back a quarter of an inch, the same as it had 
at the bottom of the panel. The measurement from there to the back of the van is 51 and three quarters. The other side is 52 inches. So I'm gonna see if I can chase that corner forward, straighten it up. And just here, there's three small holes that have been welded up. The same on the other side. I'm gonna see if I can smooth them out as well. Just a little side note, when I'm clambering around inside a car, I've got tools in the car, I've got boards that I always put down, just so that I don't get thick prints or damage the, on the panels. But that came out a bit easier than I expected. Before I started, I drew a line, six inches from where the edge was. Now, if I line that up, you can see I've got that quarter of an inch. There's a few ripples to take out, but it's relatively straight. So I'm gonna see how it all lines up now. Oh, just there where they cut it and welded it. Obviously that's split, but we expected that. After sorting out the section behind the door, to add to the screwiness on this side, this heritage door, it was new when the van was restored, this stiffener bracket here was in the wrong place. It was about eighth of an inch too far in. So when I did hinge bolts up, it pulled the skin into a dent, which in turn pulled the door forward. So I've had to cut it out and reposition it. Okay, now, now we've done that, we've got some reasonable gaps. It's down there. It's not too bad down the front. Reasonable. It's good enough for now. Do a bit of adjusting, bit of fettling, and work this area a bit better once the door is bolted on, skinned, and finalised. So now I've got the whole body clamped together, tucked together. The doors aren't skins, the skins are just clamped in place. The outer A panels are clamped in place, but the inners and the inner wings are all welded up. So they're a permanent position. The front end is all clamped together. Got nice gaps, nice alignment. The whole thing is fitting and now I'm ready to tack the front end together, then take it off to perfect the seams. They're fairly close as they are, but I like them to be just a little bit better. And then I can spot weld it all together and then final fit the front end. That's all spot welded now and tidied up. 
Only a couple of people will ever see it. I still like it to look nice. That's all spot welded in place now. Done the spot welds along the edge of the scuttle. So the next job will be skin the doors. You may have noticed while I was hitting this, I wasn't hitting, I wasn't hitting the flange straight over. I was hitting it down against my block. If you hit it straight, straight over, then that line that's from the pressing will be the shape of the door skin. It's not always the right shape, so I hit it down which rolls the edge over gives me the opportunity to stretch it out or shrink it back to make it the right size for the aperture if that makes sense the door skin is now fitted on the frame after correcting that line see the wing top of the a panel and that line all line up nicely first fit is really pleasing the edges are still just rolled around we've got a pretty even gap all the way around. It's a little bit gappy at the back, but I think that's more due to the new quarter panel, which is why I don't weld the quarter panel on until after the doors are skinned. So that edge always needs tidying up a bit. I might stretch the door out just a touch to make that easier. At the front, the gap is just a little bit big, only a tiny bit. So I'm going to stretch the front of the front of the skin just a touch. All along the bottom is pretty nice, so I'll leave that as it is. Or may maybe stretch the back just a touch. One of the most essential steps in a restoration is pre-fitting the rubbers and catches on the doors. Back's still a little bit gappy, but like I said, that's because the water panel just needs tidying up a touch. Nice and flush all the way along the bottom with a nice three mil gap. Pretty flush along the front. A nice three mil gap. Nicely fitting door. So I've finished cleaning up the door. Got nice three mil gap along the front. Nice three mil gap along the bottom. Nice and flush. The A panel's welded on. And I've done the little joiners. in the wheel arch. I'll do the other side now, get it to the same stage as this. Then I'll make the new rear door skins and hold the port panels on.
The important little feature on vans and the rear doors is a bit of a shape where the, the hinge box is on. I'll show you that in a minute after I've formed it. But the reason for it is because the hinges are a generic hinge and they close over 90 degrees, which puts them the wrong angle for the door to close flush on a minivan. And it's one of the reasons why you see so many minivans with rear doors that don't fit. So I'm going to chase that shape into it and I'll show you it in a minute. I made these cases over 20 years ago I made the Master Martin V8 valves. They're nice and hard. After I've reshaped them, tempered them so they don't shatter when I, broke, when I hammered them. I made them originally for chasing in the recess for the Aston Martin wings badge on a boot lid I was making for a Virage. Interestingly, a little bit of that process was filmed for Top Gear. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. It just uh, changes the angle of the, the hinge where it bolts on so that it closes nicely. Very simple. First fit of the two new door skins looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead now, clench them over tight, get the levels right, get the gaps right, and then play around with rubbers. 